once I'm ready and I push this check mark over here, it's going to duplicate that section. So here I have an exact. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jenny, and I'm a part of the education team at Medit. Nice to meet everyone. And today we have Dr. Matt Nejad. Hello, doctor. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good as well. I'm excited to share this cool workflow on the reduction copings I've been making using uh, Medit Design. Oh, I, I know what is the jig and reduction coping, but I'm very curious when it comes to digital way, what will be the difference or workflow? So it's going to be 3D printed jig, right? Yeah, it's 3D printed. So if you think about when you do a digital workflow, um, there's really no good opportunity to make this jig any other way. Because if you try to print the models and try to do this um, with a traditional reduction coping, you still need to have an, uh, a scan to mm. design, you know, like for a milled restoration, for example, you need to be able to use the scan. So in this situation, you're going to see that we have to both customize the scan so that we have like the new shape and we have a way to bring that into the mouth and that's a lot different than traditional or analog ways but mm -hmm. i uh, had the idea and now i want to um it worked well and i want to work with medit to try to make this maybe like one of their apps or one of their features so that we can do that because i think it's going to be a very useful thing mm -hmm. and i know a lot of people will be able to save time and minimize bringing patients back when there's minor changes wow oh that seems really interesting mm. yeah i agree let's get it started doctor Let's do it. Let me... Okay, so as we mentioned, we're gonna be reviewing digital reduction coping 3D design workflow. I'm gonna show you a real case that um, this came up with in my office and kind of how I went about solving the problem and uh, making the reduction jig with uh, my experience that I've had with digital design, specifically getting familiar with both Medit design and all the different features you can do. So that was really cool. So here we're working on tooth number two, the patient has um, a crack on the distal of number two, the mesial, the restoration has been breaking down and the mesial is missing a piece. So you can see that like, this is just food inside here before we're treating it. So um, on, with the terminal molar getting reduction proper, it's always challenging because oftentimes when you prep these areas, no matter what you've reduced, oftentimes you get like repositioning of the condyle or occlusion um, interference that is removed. And what that means is you may reduce two millimeters, but only have 0.5 millimeters, depending on the case. So I always try to find ways to minimize this, but this one caught me off guard because I was pretty confident I reduced enough. So here is rubber dam in place. Everything I do is based on biomimetic dentistry, adhesion, keeping good moisture control. So here I have just everything in place to get started. And this is my full overlay prep design. I dropped down on the distal back here until the crack went away, which is ideally a good goal, not always possible for the crack to be fully removed. Um, I also did some air abrasion to remove some caries and just be very minimally invasive. But this is a full overlay because of the, if we go back here, because of the worn appearance, I wanted to improve the anatomy because of the crack and the existing restoration and everything. Full overlay would be the most conservative and ideal restoration. And here it is after what's called immediate dentin sealing and a restorative foundation. So for biomimetic dentistry and for doing minimally invasive restorations that rely 100% on adhesion, you need to have maximum bond to dentin. And doing this immediate dentin sealing and resin coating has a lot of advantages. And one of the big ones is that it's going to give us the strongest, most reliable bond to dentin, which is a majority of the surface area here. So my prep's done. I have my immediate dentin sealing. You know, I've taken care of some of the areas where there's undercuts or irregular shapes with my restorative foundation. And um, if you're interested, by the way, in learning more about biomedic dentistry, I have a free white paper. You can visit najadinstitute.com slash WP for white paper, or you can scan this QR code over here and it'll give you more information about the protocols and techniques. And of course I teach courses on these. So if you're interested, make sure you check those out. So 
I finished my preparation, very confident that I reduced enough and difficult patient in general. But unfortunately, as I was doing an analysis after the patient left, I realized I didn't have enough space. So what I like to do during the appointment, but of course I didn't this time, is to measure things. And I'm gonna show you a cool new feature, but here I'm using Medit Measure right within the scan. So I selected the area that I want to process. And now I'm just looking right in my prep area. And you can do these cross-section cuts to take the um, space measurements. But you see how even though I reduced well over a millimeter, I made reduction in grooves and did my preparation. I was really, really minimal. 0 0.5, 0 0.2, you know, a little thinner than I'm comfortable with. Now, it's true that with biomimetic dentistry, you can get thinner restorations that perform well, but generally speaking, under one millimeter just increases the chance of complication, whereas about one millimeter is going to give us the same performance when you have a strong bond with one millimeter. You don't have any significant difference between one and two millimeter thick restorations if you have strong adhesion. There's a lot of papers on this. So anyhow, I didn't have enough space um, for reference in the future. I always, uh, I started always using the smart scan review stage, which is really amazing. But what's really important is until further updates, it, you have to specify this as a crown, not an onlay or an inlay for it to work properly. And I had already started experimenting with this, but it wasn't working because I had picked onlay. So if you change it to a crown like this, what you can do is minimize these issues during your appointments with this smart scan stage review. It's this last icon right up here. So look how this works. You click on this in the scan module and um, before the patient's left, before you've temporized. And the first thing you're going to do is um, select the tooth area. And so I'm picking the tooth using the single tooth selection option. And then you press next and it already identifies insufficient reduction. It gives us a lot of information, including where the occlusion is. But as I'm going through, you see most of my areas are over one, but this distal lingual area has a lot of regions that are under one millimeter. So that's the problem. And if I had used this and set this as a crown, this is exactly what I think would minimize these things. It also helps you see if there's layered data and shows you where occlusal contacts are. So I find this to be a really good feature. I'm looking forward to when things uh, continue to improve and it ends up working with inlays and onlays. But for now, if you pick crown for most restorations, it's going to be very usable, especially for overlays like this. You can set a lot of different settings and preferences for this. So under the settings portion of Medit Scan, you can pick different things. So these are my settings. I want the smart scan stage review or review stage. I want minimum distance to antagonist. I set it at 1.5. I just like to, you know, get that blue highlight showing me all areas because anything over 1.5, I'm very confident I have, you know, more than enough space. I don't mind 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, but I think it's just nice to be able to really see that. But you can set whatever you want here. The default's two. You can bring it down to one millimeter if you want. And um, you can also do some other settings like checking distance to adjacent for contact areas. But I'm really most interested in space with opposing antagonists here. So here is my scan for tooth number two. And after going through the reduction process, this is what I have to do to my scan. So you see, I have to actually modify my scan because how else am I gonna design this to mill a restoration? I have to input a scan and then I have to have the same uh, ability to reproduce this in the mouth with a reduction jig. So that's the process we're gonna cover. So if you take a look through here, we have our original and then you can see this reduction coping that was designed and you can see the area that's exposed for reduction. You can see my digital preparation and you could see the same reduction coping on there where the margin is now nearly flush with this area. And that's the process that I'm gonna be covering. So this all comes from a strong understanding of the power with Medit Design. There's a lot of cool things you can do and it's always improving. So once you really understand these different tools, you have so many cool possibilities. And, you know, I never really pictured myself doing 
so much digital stuff, but it's fun. It's convenient. You can do it anywhere you want. You don't have to stay at the office. I do a lot of these things on my computer at home, on my laptop. It's a Mac. So it's really easy to do these things without having to be in the office late. And it just makes so many cool applications and benefits for me. So we need to take the scan that is under reduced on that distal lingual. We need to make a new scan and a reduction coping. The new scan is going to go into my design software for my mill and the um, uh, reduction coping is going to be used in the mouth on the appointment for delivery. It would be super cool if we eventually have the ability to just make this an automated workflow or app, um, maybe something in Medic Clinic CAD. This could be really cool to have a workflow that does this for you so that you can make the coping and um, make the adjustment to the scan so that you can produce a restoration, whether it's 3D printed or milled. So I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through this because Medit Design is very advanced, but at the same time, very simple once you get the hang of it. So I think the key is to not be scared by all the different options and just start getting experience with it because the future of dentistry is all about these digital techniques and possibilities, and you need to start practicing these things as soon as possible. So first thing you're gonna do is from your case, you're gonna select the design icon up here to open Medit Design, okay? So we're gonna open Medit Design. And because I wanna see occlusion, I'm gonna give it, so the prep data, the base and the opposing, okay? And so now we have the base and we have um, the opposing as well. So maxilla, mandible, prep only, didn't really need to bring in the pre-op. Okay, now I wanna have a reference as I'm going through. And in general, I don't wanna modify my maxilla or mandible base. One of the settings at the end of Medit Design asks you if you wanna overwrite the original data and I don't wanna mess with it, so I duplicate things. So we're gonna duplicate the prepped arch. So that means the maxilla because that's number two. So all you do is you right click on the maxilla base and you can duplicate it. It's called maxilla base duplicated. I'm going to do this as my prep, my preparation or modification. So I'm just going to call it maxilla base prepared. So now we have a duplicated maxillary arch. Now there's probably numerous different ways to go about this, but this is what I found after experimenting a little, and I think it's the best way, at least as far as I know. So I want to mask the area that I want to prep, okay? So that means I want to be able to adjust just that area. So first thing I'm doing is I'm cloning everything except for the area that I want to prep. So I've selected everything for cloning using the clone tool at the bottom, and I'm looking at the opposing occlusion here, and I'm just going to do the negative feature where now I'm going to remove selected areas. And I'm just going to pick three spots to give myself like a little bit of like a reference or orientation, you know, like this is, you know, between these three different spots is where my reduction is going to be. So I'm just kind of picking those areas as precisely as I can, because one of the keys with the reduction coping is to only reduce where you need to. You want to minimize fit issues by staying minimal. So I pick those areas. Now I'm going to the lasso tool and I'm still on the negative setting where it's going to erase areas I select. And I'm just trying to make smooth lines. You know, um, one of the things I would like to see is even smoother line abilities. I can't figure out how to make it super, super smooth in these areas, but the lasso tool is the best way I found. And um, I basically work on grabbing these areas and then you can always uh, check, by the way, if you get other uh, other areas like this, you can just go back and put them back in because my goal is to just have a clone of everything except where I want to reduce, okay? So when I press this check mark, I've created the maxilla base prepared duplicate. What it's done is it's duplicated everything except for that one spot. So if you take a look at it, this is what I've created, okay? That's very important because how can you reduce just this one spot without affecting too much other things? There's all these tools and ways to adjust, but you have to be able to be precise. So I can use this as a mask, okay? So let's, let me show you how that works. 
I'm going to pick, I'm going to put both the prepared full, you know, the duplicated prepared arch and that other one, the, um, the masked one, and I'm going to right click on this uh, right now. I'm in the edit and I'm under sculpting. And when I right clicked on it, I was able to lock it. Let's just go back real quick. I want to show you that one more time. So I'm starting with being in edit that's up here. I am selected on the sculpting tools on the bottom. Okay. Now, once you're in the sculpting tools, that's when you can go into any layer you want and lock it. And that prevents you from doing any sculpting to it. So what I've done is I have locked everything of this overlay, which means that right now, because both things are there, right? I have both layers visible right now. Anything I try to do, add, remove, et cetera, will not do anything except for that one area that's not locked. That's the translucent area I just left. That means I can make my changes there without going past my selection area. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and make my adjustments using the sculpting features. So I'm going to use remove and smooth. So watch as I come here, it doesn't matter if my brush hangs over past that translucent area. It's only adjusting the area that is not covered by the mask. So you can toggle the translucency and you can make sure that you're uh, staying within that region. And that's a cool way to protect areas that you do not want to adjust. So here I've reduced it quite a bit and we can pop in the original. So the maxilla base up there as my reference, my original maxilla base I've not touched which means I can verify that things are um, reduced enough. And once you're happy with that, you would proceed to the next step. You can always redo these things. You have the original file, so it's really easy to take a step back and practice a couple of times. So um, here that looks pretty good, but what I wanna do is actually measure that because, you know, I mean, why go through all this and then end up still having a problem, right? I mean, that, that would be really defeating the purpose. So what I want to do is measure this reduction. And um, within Medit Design, what I can do is use the measure tool. So I'm going to come in here. And I am going to, I have all layers visible right now. That means I have my original prep as well, because I'm just curious. So I'm making this cross section cut. And then I can measure between one or two points. So you can see that the uh, line that's closer to the opposing, it is the prep before adjustment. And now if I took a, take a look at my adjusted areas, you can see I'm over a millimeter in most places, just shy of one millimeter in that area, but I'm actually okay with that. And so in total, I'm happy with this reduction. But if not, you can go back and of course, repeat those steps. Now, so far, what we've done is we've adjusted a scan and I can put this into, you know, I, I can bring this into Medit Clinic CAD. I can bring it into ExoCAD. I can bring it into my design software for my mill, which is the Saramil DRS from Amman Gerbach. But this is a file I can use to create the restoration, but I still need to make the actual reduction coping. So, so far what we've done is we've created like a modified prep. Now we have to create our jig. So now what I'm gonna do is select the area that um, I want my jig to be. So I'm only using this uh, masked layer over here that is having the window cut out. And I'm taking a single tooth selection. Now I'm going to spend some time smoothening things. So, you know, um, what's important here is how I'm removing, if you're not familiar with it, is toggling this button right over here. When you do this, it removes selection versus adding to selection. So you can work with adding and removing until you're happy with it. So let's come back here and continue. So I'm smoothening things out. I'm going to add to some areas like here. I'm going to remove from some areas. Like I don't want that because I don't want to have an outline for my reduction coping that is going to hit the opposing um, adjacent tooth. I mean, I don't want it to be impinging on the gingival margin or anything. So, and I, I do want to try to have like more rounded edges. I find that it minimizes fit issues, but smooth areas 
tend to print nicer and minimize, but you could also do some of these modifications after you printed it. So here I have, you know, roughly the shape I want. And all this is being done with the clone, right? I'm, I'm under, this is the setting down over here called cloned. Um, it's this little box. So what I do is once I'm ready and I push this check mark over here, it's gonna duplicate that section. So here I have an exact copy of that area of the tooth with the cutout. Now we're gonna turn this thing into our reduction coping. So let's go. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to offset this so that it's not, it's raised away from the prep. You know, you wanna have, think of it like the die spacer or the space so that it actually can sit. So you're gonna offset and you're gonna thicken. So you have these two tools at the bottom. Offset is right down over here. It's what's selected. And when you click on it, it's gonna ask you which layer, and then you can pick how much you want. So 0.22 is what's going on here, but you can also go uh, 0.15 is what seems to be working pretty well with my printers. You have to, of course, know your printer and figure out what fits properly. I don't want too much adjustment, so I'd rather have it be a little bit loose. Now I'm selecting. So in the first step here, let's go back a little too fast. So in the first step, we have offset this and you can see what that means. We're going from it being like this and then that blue outline you see is where it has become offset by 0.22 and then when I change it, it's gonna be 0.15, okay? So here's my offset. Now I have an offset layer of scan data, but now I wanna make it thicker, right? Because I can't print this, it's too thin. So I apply this and now I'm gonna put the button right next to it at the bottom there. I'm gonna pick this offset layer and you can choose how you wanna offset it. I wanna offset it. So looking at these options again, I wanna offset it in the direction that shows, hang on, um, going outwards away from. So you, when you push that, you can toggle between both directions or inward thickness, but now I want to increase, uh, I said the wrong word here. I wanna increase the thickness of this outward. And I wanna do it about one and a half millimeters, maybe one millimeter at the least so that you have a jig that you can print and use. But I like to go a little thicker because I wanna be able to customize it after it prints and or smoothen it, which you'll see. And both of those will take away a little bit of thickness. So I'd like to have a little extra. So here we have it thickened. Now we have this jig and it is offset by 0.15 millimeters, and it is um, targeting the region that we're trying to adjust and everything. Okay, then what you can do is smooth the outer surface of this. Now you can probably, probably print this without doing that, but just for trying to get a nice clean look and trying to be minimizing areas where it's gonna be uncomfortable or interfere, it's nice to have this smoothened out a little. And that's why the extra thickness. So I'm picking that smooth surface area. I'm picking the entire um, uh, coping essentially, but I now wanna remove the intaglio, right? Because I don't want, I've already offset the intaglio and I don't want that inner surface to become looser and looser. So I really just want to smoothen the outside without any risk for fit issues on the internal. So now again, I'm using the negative selection here to uh, remove areas. And I'm just going to spend a minute or, minute or two kind of removing any areas that are responsible for fit. So the walls, the occlusal, the cuss tip areas, but outer surface is perfectly fine for smoothening. Um, you could also try using the lasso, but it's actually nice be, uh, with the brush because it doesn't go all the way through. So it's a lot easier to make these selections this way. So once I have it pretty much the way I want, then I can choose how much smoothening. I've tried different things, but maximum smoothening seemed to be pretty nice. I would still like to see even smoother, but um, especially on those areas where you see the ripples, but I can do that outside of the mouth. So here now I have my produced reduction jig. You can take a look at it. This is on the reduced model over there. Um, I can show you some different photos too, but basically we started with the original. 
We ended up with our digital prep. We've uh, created that digital prep so that we can send that to produce the restoration, whether that's Medit Clinic CAD, ExoCAD, design software. You have a scan now that you can use for design purposes. And I printed this using uh, Sprint Ray model natural. It looks kind of white here for whatever reason, but it's kind of the natural color. It's just the dye resin. Um, you can also experiment doing this in other materials, but I like the idea that it's opaque. And um, some people are like the idea of doing it with like a Clusal Guard resin as well, but I just wanted to try it with this and it worked well. So here it is tried in. I've sharpied all around the edges because as I'm making my adjustments, the last thing I'm going to do is try to remove some of that to give me a little bit of cushion or a little bit of uh, extra relief in that area. And I want a reference to make sure I don't do too much. So I've sharpied that. I have also sharpied or penciled, actually. This is pencil. It marks a lot easier in the mouth. So I penciled the area that I want to adjust. And then here is after I've adjusted that area, and you can see I've removed the Sharpie along the outer margin area by taking my burr. All this, by the way, done with an electric handpiece. I'm using B and Air. What's important about electric is that you can control your speed and you can imagine how hard it is to work back here and see things precisely. So I'm holding this with one finger. I have 20 to 50,000 RPM going using a diamond burr and I'm focusing on removing the pencil area first. Ideally, you want to take a uh, either a round end chamfer or a round burr, but making sure not to overly reduce and go concave. You're trying to bring things flush with the coping. And then in the last step, you definitely want to use a tapered diamond burr so that you can rest it in a way where you're basically planing this whole area and the reduction coping together. And with the electric hand piece at 20 to 50,000 RPM, you can do this carefully without overdoing it, without creating irregular portions of your prep. I can't really imagine doing this without that. So this is my preparation that's been modified. I resealed, so immediate dent sealing, I just resealed that area with uh, immediate dent sealing, which is a technique that's covered in my courses, but essentially you're applying your primer, your bond, and your adhesive to create adhesion to the dentin layer. And with the biomedic approach, I'm going to be cementing the restoration with heated composite. That's a really cool thing as well. So heated composite has a lot of different advantages. It's highly filled, it minimizes marginal ditching, it has the best blend and um, it, I already said, minimizes ditching and then um, even just blending margins. So now think about the area we just did the reduction coping. If I have a little bit of space there or if I'm just a little bit open, one of the benefits of the biomedic approach is we're cementing with heated composite. I'm finishing that area. It's not cement, you know, that area, it's composite. I'm going to have composite there so that I can have a really nice finish. It's durable. It's a final restorative material. So there's so many cool benefits to this, and it works perfect for these types of minimally invasive treatments, even when you need to use a reduction coping. So I tried in my restoration. It fit really well. Here is the beautiful anatomy that um, we're producing with my mill. This is right out of the mill, but just stain and glaze. I'm using Lissy from GC because we don't have to crystallize. I really like the material and the aesthetics of it. And um, so I have that and it's milled with my Sarah mill. A couple different views here. You can see the nice adaptation along the margins, really hard to get a distal photo to show you, but I can see that in the mouth with my loops and my mirror and everything looked great. Best I can do is show you the radiograph. So you can see that we got a really nice result here on tooth number two. This is using um, my x-ray software from Curl that uses AI for other detection. So when we did this, we also talked about treating the opposing on a subsequent visit. This is really a cool uh, technology. Patients like it because it gives extra 
uh, power in diagnosis. It helps them understand and see it because for the areas you talk about darkness, the pink just makes it stand out and then you can toggle it on and off. Super cool. Um, Pearl works with a lot of different uh, systems out there so that you can use AI diagnosis. And we've been practicing with it for mm, two to two years now, I think, but it's been a long time. So that is the completed reduction coping workflow and case. Now, I just want to give a shout out to Medit because without all these apps and applications, I wouldn't be able to do things like this. Medit has really opened the door for so many clinicians to do awesome things with dentistry. It makes us so free to be able to do all these cool uh, applications on our own, be able to innovate, be able to problem solve. We have all these different tools and they continue to get better. So a big thank you to Medit for for constantly innovating. And I just look forward to more and more of these types of tools and applications as time goes on. Please follow me on YouTube. I'm putting out a lot of content growing really fast. Uh, right now we're at 230,000 or 210,000 followers. And that's only uh, a huge change that happened in the past two, three months from consistency and good content. So make sure you follow. It's at Biomimetic Dentistry. And again, if you want my white paper on biomedic dentistry, you can scan this QR code. It's a nice several page document that covers the theory, the science and references. And of course, if you want to go further and get trained, I have courses available on NajadInstitute.com. They're online, on demand, very convenient, highly rated. Give them a look, please. And of course, stay connected, follow me Instagram. Um, I share a lot of cool cases like this. Digital is my one of my favorite areas in dentistry, but my original expertise comes from biomimetic, adhesive, cosmetic, and restorative dentistry. Thank you all. And I hope you found this to be a valuable uh, clinical case demonstration on how to make a reduction coping. Wow, I really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. All seems really simple due to digital way. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing all your tips with us, Dr. Matt Neda. Let's go to q &A session. Sounds good. Okay. So today we have three questions. So we'll start with the first question. Sure. Question number one. Are there any cautions when using a reduction jig? Any cautions when using a reduction jig? Yeah. So a couple, there's actually a lot of, a lot of them. Uh, if you're not using heated composite, mm. you usually do not want to adjust margin areas, okay? So one important tip, and I know that I didn't necessarily cover this during the webinar, you don't usually use a reduction jig to modify margins. Usually you're going to do deal with like crown internal areas. Mm. Margin's not something you want to mess with, but because I do with heated composite with the biomedic approach, excellent isolation, and it was way above the gingival margin, mm -hmm. I felt that I could still make a good result because composite was my cement. So when you're doing this, the cautions are don't do marginal changes if you're using a standard cement. You know, I wouldn't want to have cement filling a big gap. I want to have a good marginal integrity, but because it's composite in that area, I'm not worried about it. The other thing is you need to be very precise. So you got to learn your printer. You got to learn the settings. Um, I had to print this a couple times in order to find that 0.15 worked well. I was trying it on the model to figure out. And so 0.15 is my default. I wrote it down mm -hmm. as time goes on. There's new resins and things. So I might try different things as time goes on to figure out like what's the best. It was a little bit loose. But when I went a little less, it was too tight and that's too much adjusting to make it fit. I'd rather have a little mm -hmm. loose. So your caution is to know your printer. It's to not adjust the margin. And then when you're actually making the adjustment, you need to make sure you don't overdo it. And that's where the reduction jig helps. But so does electric handpiece. You have to be precise. Drawing those Sharpie lines really helps you understand if you've over reduced, if you've erased all the Sharpie on the side, you might be thinking, wow, I just removed like way more of the margin area than I wanted. So mm -hmm. generally it's a good strategy to have uh, 
references like the Sharpie mm -hmm. and pencil to do. So that's that that's those are the cautions I can think of. I would always also suggest trying it on your model first to make mm -hmm. sure that it's not too excessive. Um, you know, if you reduce too much and you're already deep, you have to worry about pulp exposure. But just all in all, it has a lot of potential as long as you think it through. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for sharing your tips. Of course. Okay, question number two. Are there any cautions when printing reduction jig? Yeah, so, okay, so when you're printing, first, first thing is you want to make sure you know your settings, like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So um, when you don't know, what you want to do is uh, make, you know, I don't know if you were following when we were doing this, but it's not that hard to make two or three. You can clone them and do a few different offsets so that you can figure out what works well. You know, you can actually, like, go back and do an offset of, uh, you can do three duplicates and then change the offset and do one of them, call it 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You know, you can try these things to narrow it down. And that's essentially what I had to do originally. So um, one caution is that another caution when you print, of course, no supports on the internal surface. You don't want to affect mm -hmm. anything with your fit. So you're going to want to put your supports on the outside. That's fine. You can finish and smoothen that, no problem. So you do just don't want to have any of it being inside and risking your fit. If you don't have a good fit, this whole thing could be very frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, you've already made your restoration. If it doesn't fit, you know, luckily, none of those issues happened. It fit very predictably. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I extended a little more and removed in a few areas where I probably had around one millimeter um, originally, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss some areas. So like I, I went a little bit further when I was marking things just mm -hmm. to give myself a little bit of room because trying to do a very small surface on the distal of that tooth number two would be hard to get a burr and be that precise, right? You, your burr is a certain size. So I kind of wanted to limit the size, but at the same time, not be so tiny that I might end up having a struggle to fit the final restoration. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. okay, last question, question number three. Can we make a reduction jig when there is no 3D printer? Reduction jig? Um, I want to say no, but I guess maybe if you can mill it, yes. You know, when you design this, you have two options, right? You've created this file, which is the coping. Now you can either mill it or you can print it. So if you have a mill that's capable of it, then yes, you know, people make mm -hmm. milled night guards, you can make milled provisionals. So yes, you could mill this, no problem. But if you can't mill and you can't print, the furthest you can get in this process is modifying your scan data making a restoration, but then you're left without the ability to accurately make the changes in the mouth. And the best you can do is maybe draw it and try to, you know, just do it by hand. But that's where things can get unpredictable and create more frustration. So I don't recommend that. Mm. I was just thinking about the material. So when you print, um, do you use the same material just as the crown? 3D printing material, or do you use different one? I use different. So I did this one using um, dye and model natural oh, two. So just the same resin as the models that I print. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cheaper. It yeah. is precise enough. You know, yeah. uh, I, I was thinking like, you know, similar to what, you, you know, you want it to be precise, but they're all, when you're printing these days, everything's pretty precise if you have a good yeah. printer, but I don't need an expensive material. I don't need a super strong material. So yeah. I'm not going to use like ceramic crown or onyx or one of those <laughs> really strong materials because there's no need. So basically I think the ones to consider would be um, model resins or mm -hmm. possibly night guard and splint resins, though I didn't really like the idea of the translucency. I preferred something that's easier to see. That's why I mm -hmm. was leaning towards that. Mm -hmm. What would be perfect is I have some pink resin that was from Sprint mm -hmm. Ray when they did a promotion. So something like that with high mm -hmm. contrast would be nice, mm -hmm. you know, but Diane Model Natural did the job perfectly. Mm, okay 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 that's all about it for today so you will be Great. able to watch this webinar on our youtube channel and medit academy once it's completed thank you for being here doctor my pleasure thank you
Bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you.